Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. This is part three of four of our Fireteam reviews. In part one, we checked out Fireteam Venom, part two, Fireteam Crimson, and Demarcation Media had a review of this set as well. And today, we're looking at Fireteam Eagle, followed by the next time, Sierra Squad. And Fireteam Eagle is also a set that I'm sending to Demarcation Media, and his review will drop at the exact same time. So you can check out this review, and then immediately after, check out Demarcation Media's review. Fire Team Eagle. What a beautiful set. Five figures still and with a gorgeous looking light bridge. Step aside, Venom and Crimson. The floor is needed. Oh, they changed the instruction manual to a long one now. I see. So this came out in 2015. So this was the following year. So they'd released Venom and Crimson and maybe a couple more. And now they started to ramp it up a little bit. This is Fire Team Eagle. Another scout. We've had a scout in all three of the sets now. Venom Venom, Crimson, and Eagle. That's ridiculous. And also an Oceanic, a Spartan Aviator, and Enforcer, and my all-time favorite Halo 4, Halo 5 Spartan, the Spartan Soldier. I love this guy so much, and I have so many different variants of him in Mega Constructs. I think they just nailed the job here. I think he looks absolutely awesome. As mentioned in my previous video, the Spartan Oceanic can be a hit or miss. Sometimes the visor is terribly applied. Sometimes it's really well executed. The Fighting Venom Oceanic looks great. This one has a few more flaws uh, in terms of the black paint application, but it still looks good. It's a very difficult one for Mega to pull off, so they're honestly pretty brave even trying it. And then the Enforcer and Aviator, we got both of these in Fireteam Crimson. I also pointed out in my previous review, when they went to new articulation, Mega introduced this like speckling effect on the figures, where you can see no figure is the same because they have these random dots everywhere. The ones on Venom are very obvious. Again, with the Oceanic, you can see these dark green speckles everywhere everywhere, but this one is a little more subtle. So five figures, and yes, they took it down to four figures eventually, which is a shame, but the silver visors are great. As mentioned in my previous video as well, I'm a big fan of Forerunner structures in my set, so the fact that you get a hard light bridge is really awesome. It's uh, something that you use a lot in Halo, you use it particularly in Halo Infinite as well, but it's pretty absent in sets. This is an interesting way we're starting this off as well. This set is also pretty crazy because you just get Forerunner weapons which again is pretty rare. This is gonna go in the middle of our light bridge to hold it all together. I love any hard light kind of stuff and you also get a hard light shield in this set. Perfect combination. A couple more of these transparent bricks. I managed to get these fire teams 100% complete, which is very rare. So it's been a great opportunity to actually build up a nostalgic thing knowing that it's 100% complete. It's a really nice thing. You don't usually see that. You also don't usually see Mega uh, forgetting to color in one of the dots, but that should be yellow. <laughs> That's just a minor thing. Wait, no, no, I'm wrong because <laughs> I'm totally wrong. My bad, Mega, because these are meant to go underneath first. <laughs> My bad. I'm disrespecting your brand without even knowing the truth. Hard light bridge. You could make this into a very large bridge, especially if you had multiple of this set. Though I know you probably don't want multiple of these yellow Spartans. The fire teams are good. They serve a purpose for what they are, which is just like a fun team. I've had some of my fire teams square off against uh, some of my enemies in dioramas before. At the end of the day, they are just one copy and paste color, so you definitely don't want multiple of this set, which I think is what Mega is trying to do more with their releases nowadays. I think their releases, especially with the two-in-one features, are more kitted towards, like, actually having people buy multiple. The flag also changed as well to a cheaper design, which is a shame. The old flag used to be three pieces with this skull, and now it's just uh, a basic flag. The design on this is flawless. This is really, really good. The loss of the skull on top is a bit of a shame. I don't think the flag would really go on the bridge because it's hard light, so let's put the flag down there. There we go. Oh, hello. Also, the introduction of the new base plates is a thing that happened. That is definitely just a thing that happened. I actually think they're the worst of the base plates. I love the new ones that are like sort of uh, sticky outy in every direction because they're good for dioramas. They're not really made for new articulation, right? Like when you put it like that, the Spartan's sort of just like standing a bit awkwardly, or is that just me? Maybe it's just me. It's not crazy generous on weapons because you only have one weapon per character. In the other fire teams last year, you had about seven weapons for the five characters, but you do get four pulse grenades. That's instead of the five grenades that you got in other sets, but I totally excuse it because these are new molds and they look really great. I don't think there's any set that comes with four pulse grenades uh, other than these. Then you have the full lineup of mega constructs or the, just the full lineup of uh, Halo 4-5 uh, weapons, right? You've got the bolt shot, light rifle, 
binary rifle, scatter shot, and the incineration cannon. To have all them in one set is wild. The light rifle has been in almost no sets, as Strandy42 pointed out to me. The fact that they were all in one set is really special. I really respect and appreciate that. As well as this nice display stand and this additional base, we've also got the hard light shield that uh, probably just got introduced around this time. And it is a really great accessory. We've also got the jetpack. That's a really nice mold. I've gone on record many times saying I love this jetpack. It's just such a nice one to give to your characters. And although there is this clip to attach figures onto the uh, the base plate just straight through their back. Why not just give them the uh, little jetpack? Looking great. And then I guess the binary rifle goes to the scout. As always, you can rate my decisions on uh, which weapons I give to my characters down below. The Promethean weapons have this weird thing that all of them have this uh, sticky out knob and that can make it a little more difficult to position in the character's hands as best you want. The design is simply so that Promethean Knight can hold them, but honestly, I think it would have been better without. It's, uh, it's viewer, viewer discretion. Of, it's up to you to decide, you know, I, I don't mind either way. So we've got our scout uh, flying through the air there, and we've got all these other weapons. What are we going to give them to? Uh, yes, I definitely want the soldier to have the shotgun. I always consider soldiers as, like, up close and personal. That looks really nice, really nice. These yellow figures just look really good on this Fujifilm camera. The incineration cannon, I guess I'll give to the aviator. Uh, the aviator's, uh, like, sort of like an incinerary expert, right? Like, um, heavy weapon. So we'll give him the incineration cannon. Light rifle we'll give to the enforcer and the bolt shot to the oceanic. And these two we can also give some grenades to. There is no ammunition crate with this one. You know, we got an ammunition crate with the fire team crimson. But at the same time, this is uh, a really nice set and comes with a hard light bridge and the extra jetpack, the extra hard light shield. So it's definitely not lacking. Oh, that's, that's the thing. We'll definitely give the hard light shield and the bolt shot to the oceanic. Very nice. So as always with these reviews, I'm now gonna flip that camera down and let's see what these look like in a diorama. All right, folks, there we have it. It's the third fire team in our collection, Fire Team Eagle. They are looking really good. Uh, probably my favorite one so far, to be honest with you. And it, it goes both ways. Like, the yellow is a bit plain, and I maybe would have chosen a different visor color. I know I was commenting on the silver visor being a nice touch before, but now it's like, it kind of does blend into the yellow a bit too much. But that's where the black highlights on the visors, on the helmets, actually help as well. Comparatively to Fire Team Venom and Fire Team Crew, Crimson. I'd say this might be the best for value for money in terms of the full selection of Promethean weapons. The flag has lost a piece, but does seem like really good quality in other ways. So although the eagle is really nice, the gold highlighting rim on these two flags is also a great touch. So we kind of lost the gold rim and an additional piece, but the eagle looks great. The Promethean weapons, yes, they are very good. The hard light shield, fantastic. And this light bridge is definitely my favorite of the three dioramas. Like, I love the Forerunner structure here, but this light bridge is so dope. So let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite, which do you think is the best fire team so far. This video is dropping at the exact same time on Demarcation Media's channel as well. So I'm going to link it in the comments, in the description, in the pinned video. I hope you have the chance to go and check out that content creator. He's an amazing reviewer. He does a much more detailed, very well-structured review style than I do. So definitely check him out. This was another video with the domain. You stay awesome. You stay safe out there, folks. Join me next time for the Sierra Squad review and the domain is signing off.